us for coming. We really appreciate uh, the turnout. I know it's a, it's a working day, there's lots of classes, uh, lots of students, you deal with lots and lots of students, and uh, we really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I'm going to turn this over right away uh, to the provost because he's here. Most of us are on a little bit of short schedule, so we want to get started. And then uh, I'll jump back in after him. Uh, but let me extend uh, a lot of thanks to everyone who worked on this, uh, especially in the, since we're in the unit, especially in the unit side with all of the changing dates on when we're moving and whether your boxes were here or wherever. All that kind of stuff. We appreciate all your patience on that. As you know, that uh, it was a big, it was a big effort by everybody to get that done. So we appreciate that. We appreciate the patience, all the work that went on for the dean's office, the unit, uh, the president's office, Rich Stanley's office. A lot of, a lot of different people making all that happen at once. And so we really appreciate that. Uh, so let me turn it over to the provost, Mark Sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to your new building. Uh, <laughs> uh, I had a great opportunity to tour it before you all moved in, and uh, it was a, a, a remarkable change from when the law left it. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to say a much better change. Uh, but it really reflects uh, for us uh, a, an important commitment to, to, to be investing in the humanities. And uh, to that end, Michael would have been here, but as Michael's schedule is wont, uh, it changed suddenly. And uh, so uh, uh, while I was coming, I didn't think I was having a speaking role, but uh, I am. Uh, but it really is, to me, you know, it's, it's not really different. What I will tell you is what I said to the uh, uh, search committee for the Dean of Humanities, which was that this is the, the humanities are the core and the heart of the institution. If you don't have strong, and successful, and vibrant humanities at the institution, you really don't have an institution. Uh, well, you might have a different kind of institution, but not a university. And, and so I think that this is a wonderful first step for us to invest in the Department of English, to invest in the humanities generally with the new center here, or the new site here for the Institute for Humanities and some of the centers located in it. Uh, to me, it's, it's, it's a really a marvelous space. Uh, when uh, Mike and I toured the uh, building, there's a great reading room up on the top floor, and I love the chairs. <laughs> yeah. If you ever want to have a nap, those are the chairs. Uh, but uh, those chairs were fantastic. We were hoping that, uh, I don't know what's going on, Pat, but we were hoping that the, uh, the, the books in there would become all the books that you've all written and other members of the humanities faculty because to me it's a, it's a marvelous tribute to, to uh, all the work that goes on here intellectually in terms of driving knowledge and really advancing knowledge and giving us a whole different perspective on the world and on life and so this is a, an incredibly critical part for uh, Arizona State University. Uh, from my perspective as provost, the humanities are, are core to what we do. It's core to our general education. Almost every freshman, probably every freshman, who comes to ASU is taking a course from somebody in the Department of English. Think about that. This year we admitted 11,500 first-time, full-time freshmen on the Tempe camp, or on the, at the university, and another thousand uh, online. And uh, so that means that there are going to be a lot of students always looking to understand the world through the lens that you are going to provide in the humanities. And that is absolutely critical. So it's, it's, it's a, a great pleasure to be here, to see this finally open, to see that uh, we uh, didn't uh, uh, jerk you around too much in moving you in. Uh, I'm sure there's still some settling in processes and we uh, appreciate your patience as you work through those. Uh, but we are very excited about this. Uh, we think the next step is obviously to renovate uh, language and literature, uh, a building that desperately needs something. Uh, and uh, uh, that will be uh, something we'll be undertaking soon. Uh, but uh, it is really reflective of the fact that uh, uh, we know we have to energize uh, everything that's associated with this core part of Arizona State University, which is the humanities and the Department of English is such a central part of that in order for us to be successful. So with that, I say we're delighted to be here, glad that you're getting settled in, and uh, 
back, look forward to coming back many more times, and uh, I'll turn it back over to Pat, who, by the way, it, where he's leaving, just so you know, is because he's leaving to go give a talk because he's going to go try and raise some money. <laughs> appreciate that. Um, I just have a couple of finishing comments. First of all, I think you all know this, and I've said it in several settings, but uh, the overall strategic plan is this is a bit of the class, College of the Bar Sciences campus, because we'll be next to the college, we'll be next door. There'll be a lot of academic advisors in there with all the students. We hope, we hope to continue to move your writing courses in particular closer in this direction, so we'll have a lot of uh, student traffic in here. 47% of the majors to the college change their major in the first year, 47%, okay? And so a lot of those conversations start with English instructors and they finish with advisors and you can be able to say, hey, 20 paces right over there, there's uh, 25 advisors sitting there ready to help you. So that, that's the overall concept. The other thing I wanted to point out is I was in front of, I'm going to do something, my wife always chuckles and I'm in theory raising money, she knows that's, that, that doesn't work with me, but anyway. Um, but I'm supposed to do that. But I also was in front of a number of alums uh, in the last um, month or so, and the number one thing they were talking about, the number, they all are hiring folks, all of them. Okay. And the number one thing they said is we need better writing. We love the liberal arts and science students. They're adaptable. They're open to thought. They like to read. We need better writing. Short writing, analytical writing, page, summary, well, it begins here. It begins here. We're trying to teach it throughout the college, but it begins here, and you're playing a vital role, and for all the instructors and lecturers that do all that delivery, and I know some, some faculty that do that delivery, that we know that this place was a big change for you, and we're continue, there's a plan in place, we're receiving your feedback, we'll continue to work on that. Uh, we met again recently to think about how to, to make it as comfortable and as effective as possible. Lastly, for the literature folks, I'm, I always, literature, film, media, I always think of this, and I was thinking about it today when I woke up, that when I was in middle school in Little Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I went to a Catholic school, so my little, my world was pretty small. In seventh and eighth grade, my mother, um, I loved her dearly, decided that we should read an hour after lunch in the summer. <laughs> seven of us in 1,100 square feet, so it felt like we were still in school. And I was thinking, what in the heck has happened to my mother? I don't get this. Now, I was a first, I, you know, I've tried things like, we've been in school for nine months. And the, my fa I was not a first generation student, but my father was a teacher and a coach, and I was most interested in the coaching part, not the teaching part. And right next door was a field, we played baseball, and I could hear the kids out there in the middle of the afternoon. And in Iowa, it's only nice for about six weeks. No, seriously, it's playing baseball, it's only nice for about six weeks. And I could hear him out there, and I didn't, I really, I thought my mother had lost it. And I complained bitterly, but it didn't help. And, but it was a little window to the world. I read things like Tom so a, a little bookmobile. Remember, those of us who are old, remember, older, sorry. But remember that a bookmobile came, we used to walk and we could check out one or two books, and in two weeks you had to, in theory, explain to mom you were finished and take a bath. Okay, and so I would get Tom Sawyer or Call the Wild. I read a little Huck Finn, which was too hard for me, and because of all that was going on in there. But that was my window to the world. I've always thought of that. We tried to impress that on our own kids, which was hard to do. Um, and we were less effective than my mother, I think. But uh, that's your world. And it is, remember, 40%, uh, 35, I'm sure Paul here, 35% of our students are first generation students in the college. Right, first time they're arriving. Most students, as you know, Mark knows all these stats, are still from Arizona. Many have not traveled very far. Not way different than what I, my life was like in the mid 60s. And so that's a window for them. You're the ones delivering that. You're the ones that have to do that. And we need to corral as many students as possible, get them in those courses, because it's a way for them to see all kinds of life complexities, what the world is like without having to go anywhere, right? And not having to do it on this little big phone they're doing. Yeah. I mean, maybe they can read it on there, but at least they'd be reading something on there. 
things. So your mission is critical. We know that. Uh, we're working hard to try to improve it. And so we appreciate the time, and I'm sorry we have to close it off. But enjoy the, I think we paid for this. Didn't we? So, <laughs> so enjoy the, did you, did they hear? We, we paid, okay, so enjoy the food. All right, see you later. Thank you.